This is a radioactive lens. And it's radioactive because it has thorium oxide added to it. And the reason why it has thorium oxide added to it is to cut down on chromatic aberration. This is a Pentax SMC Takamar 50 millimeter 1.4 lens mounted in M42. The majority of the radiation is coming off of this rear element here. And you can actually see that this rear element actually has kind of a yellowish brownish cast to it which will affect the picture. I'll swap out these lenses so you can actually see. So I'm gonna swap it between this lens here and this 50 millimeter Zeiss ZF lens, which isn't radioactive at all. It has no radiation. And I actually had to take this uh, lens apart because it had some stuff that had flaked off into the rear element. And taking it apart, I was able to actually uh, examine all of the elements of the lens and to see which ones were radioactive and how radioactive. The main thing that I want to find out about this lens is, can you see the radiation on a digital sensor? Uh, that's always been a question I have always wondered because I know that if you hit a camera sensor with enough radiation, you can see it as like white specks, like noise. I don't think that's ever really been addressed and I really wanted to find out if it would show up. And so I did a couple of tests and what I found out is that actually on the Sony A7S III that I'm filming on now, this radiation coming off of here will show up on the sensor when I'm trying to shoot a photo and I have it uh, uh, up as long as uh, 30 second exposures. But the problem is, is that since the noise reduction in this camera is so aggressive, it will actually remove the noise that I'm seeing in the LCD in the pictures. What I had to do was actually go and uh, get an adapter for this uh, lens to fit on a Nikon D850 to try and capture pictures and a time lapse of the noise. Well, it looks like you can see radiation coming off of those lenses, but it should only be a concern to you if you're shooting long exposure photography like astrophotography or astro time lapse or star stacking uh, photography like with the star trails, because that's where you're really going to see that uh, radiation noise uh, creep into your images. Because usually, like for me to get the uh, noise that I did, I had to have my exposure up as long as 30 seconds to a minute for it to really show up. But that doesn't mean that it couldn't uh, come up in shorter exposures. It, it really all depends on uh, you know, your ISO and how much you're gonna push that image. The noise that these lenses create is actually pretty hard to uh, get rid of, I would imagine, because it's not like little hot pixels or just regular digital noise. Some of it, it's like kind of weird, kind of bigger shapes where the particles have kind of come in at an angle on the sensor or bounced around and, and hit around inside of there. And so it makes it really difficult to remove. 
I was mainly just looking at the consumer lenses that are out there, like this Pentax 50 millimeter that I tested, but there are a bunch of other uh, manufacturers that manufactured lenses from uh, the 1940s up until the 1970s that used thorium oxide, and some of them were like uh, Canon, Nikon, uh, Minolta, Kodak, Leica, uh, a bunch of manufacturers that used thorium oxide in the production of their photography lenses. And it wasn't just photography lenses that used thorium oxide, there are high-end cinema lenses that used thorium oxide in their production as well, like the K35s or the Super Baltars or the Kinanipics. I know I'm butchering that name somehow. I've also been told that uh, some of the Panavision lenses from that time period have thorium oxide in them as well. And that would make sense because that was the technology that was uh, used at that time to help with uh, optical quality and to cut down on chromatic aberration. And so for those lenses to be radioactive, it would only make sense. The level of exposure that you're getting from these lenses is fairly low, unless you are using it as a pillow or eating them. Uh, so it really shouldn't be anything to be concerned about. I mean, the radiation will uh, pass through a camera body like a mirrorless or a digital SLR because you can actually detect the radiation on the other side of the camera because some of that gamma radiation is able to pass right through that camera body and into your face. <laughs> so that is something to think about like uh, going forward, uh, dealing with these lenses, but it shouldn't really be anything of a... Uh, of, major concern to anyone because the level of additional radiation that you're absorbing from these lenses would be very low unless I, unless you have this uh, camera up to your face for uh, prolonged periods of time using these lenses. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, like and share it and consider subscribing because I'm going to have a lot more videos coming out like this. And see you later.